How's it going, boys? Today, we are going to be talking about Magic the Gathering Arena and how much rigged the matchmaking actually is. So first of all, let's get this one out of the way. If you don't think the matchmaking is rigged in Magic the Gathering Arena, you are most likely a moron. You are, in fact, 100% most likely a moron. Because that's just fact. Any business that creates an online game that is even remotely competitive, which it should be, because one of the main basic functions that a human desires for the most type is some kind of feeling of accomplishment, competitiveness, and whatnot. You get the accomplishment through the feeling of competitiveness. And that is exactly what games do. So the optimal win, uh, win, win percentile for any game is 50%. No more, no less. Every game that is not going to go bankrupt in the, next, uh, in the next two months does have a 50% win cap on pretty much everything you do. Unless you're playing like super easy difficulties and whatnot. But even those are rigged in ways that I'm not going to be even mentioning. But here we're just going to be looking at the 50% win rate. So, magic can be uh, can be uh, rigged in three ways. One, the mulligan phase, which we're not going to be even uh, remotely talk. Well, we're going to talk about it a little bit, but that is the most unlikely thing. Two, the who you play against, which is the actual rigging that they do in the, uh, in this game. And three, do you draw lands or do you not draw lands? Uh, I like to complain and bitch and moan about drawing too many lands or not enough lands, but in reality I understand RNG. And Magic the Gathering seems to actually have true RNG. If any one of you thinks, for example, that, uh, let's see, what's a deck that I'm gonna delete sooner or later, this. If you, for example, think, let's say, 1 is lands, 0 is not a land. If you think that RNG looks something like this, well, then congratulations. That cannot even be called a pseudo RNG. That is at best hitting the 35% mark of what RNG can be. Because that's not how RNG works. If you have 60 cards in a deck, if you are drawing one land per three cards all the time, that is literal, uh, that, that now, that becomes uh, rigged RNG. In reality, when you draw five lands in a row or uh, five non-lands in a row, that is actual RNG. Because in a, in a deck where you have uh, 50, 60 cards, there should be multiple strings on average on the higher 50% plus scale that you're going to draw multiple times, three plus times or something like that, five lands in a row, five non-lands in a row, and so on and so on and so on. Because if you have uh, if you have something like a uh, twenty digit something and there's not even a single RNG line that goes like uh, six uh, six of the same numbers in a row, if you only have two two numbers, you are hitting a very low RNG percentile. But if you have true RNG, you're gonna hit that thing, and you can also hit it multiple times. And in the sixty car in the sixty car deck. That RNG factor would in fact be exactly like two or three or plus times. And that is actual legitimate RNG. I like to bitch and moan about it, but that's just the reality of it. It is not rigged RNG when you draw five lands in a row, uh, either on a win streak or loss streak. It would be flat out, in my opinion, also too hard to code, but I'm not exactly a coder. I'm just someone who understands percentiles most of the times. And here is the actual way you, uh, way you can easily uh, establish a 50... Well, actually, let's go over the mulligan phase. The mulligan phase is rigged because uh, uh, Magic the Gathering's weakest point is the fact that you need to draw lands. The fact that lands exist in Magic the Gathering make it a completely unviable competitive game because all your, all your v wins and losses are pretty much determined do you draw land or do you not draw land. Because lands are an actual physical thing that take a turn to draw, you can fall behind in one turn easy at any point. And if you're top decking, the enemy doesn't draw land, and you draw land, well, you most likely can easily just lose off of that because of the momentum. 
But that's a little bit of a different subject that we're going to be touching on when I actually make the video about why red decks are the pinnacle of magic and nothing will ever top them. But yeah. So, how do we actually... Well, actually, the mulligan phase... The mulligan phase is the weakest part of Magic the Gathering by far. If you do not get uh, the bare minimum two lands, your hand is garbage. And mulliganing instantaneously puts you in a hugely disproportionate downside, especially if you go second, especially against aggro decks and whatnot. So, starting with two or three lands is the most optimal thing in Magic, and it is forced for a reason. Otherwise, a lot of people would just get flat out frustrated because, honestly, the chances of you drawing uh, three lands in opening hand, if you have 24 lands out of 60, is... Two lands is less than 15% uh, or something like that. No, actually, a cumulative, so it's a little bit higher than 15%, but that does not matter. It's a pretty low chance to actually draw enough lands as you would like them. It's a very more likely chance that you're not drawing exactly enough lands. So, you know, diminishing returns essentially comes into play there. And I am not gonna do that without Excel, and I am not gonna switch up my scenes so I can actually just fuck around in Excel for you for 10 minutes just because, just because I like to do so. Not the video. But yeah. Mulliganing is uh, semi, uh, semi, uh, semi RNG, and whatnot. But the real, uh, the real way to f uh, to establish fifty percent win rate in this deck, uh, in this game, is extremely easy. Uh, any deck that can be made can be easily quantified. And if you're a deck maker who makes decks proactively a lot, like for example me, you're gonna start to notice extremely simple to monitor patterns extremely fast. If you may, uh, so. Also, there is a baseline here. In every expansion in Magic the Gathering Arena that I have played in, uh, there's around, like, I don't know, a grand total of 40, on average, very prime tier cards that most people use, and then there's a little bit of uh, variation when it goes to in specific details, but yeah. So, if you have 40 cards that are extremely good, they establish a baseline of, of what the deck does. And most decks will use these cards, so that's already a quantifiable thing you can actually do to create an algorithm that finds what your deck is good against and what it is not. The trick here comes in that factor, for example, infinity turns. Uh, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure this is the case, Magic the Gathering pretty much saves all the data that you make from decks and then quantifies them in some kind of situation. For example, infinity turns. At the start, I did not play against things that uh, that countered this deck. It was rarely because this deck gets most uh, countered by planeswalkers, the, the inability to draw cards, and aggro decks. I'm not facing aggro decks, but I am facing other decks that you know just destroy enchantments and whatnot. For example, today I have played a couple of games with this deck. And all, every single time I queue in, it's pretty much against almost a perfect counter deck because it specializes in destroying enchantments because Wilderness Reclamation is such an, such an insane, uh, insanely valuable card here. And it stops card draw and things like that. And, you know, essentially things like that. And kills Planeswalkers partly. But the killing Planeswalkers is not really a counter. But the game, considering I have won a pretty decent amount of games with this deck, thinks that countering Planeswalkers is a huge thing for this deck. Because we have Nissa. Nissa is a Planeswalker. Also, we have Karn's Bastions, which are usually used in two types of decks. Proliferate the Planeswalkers or proliferate creatures with, uh, with counters on them. So that's instantaneously something that the, uh, that the game sees. It sees a bunch of cards that sp serve one specific purpose, and then it kind of quantifies the deck in something like, for example, three. Mid-range, aggro, control, late game, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what are the correct categories, but there are the categories like this exist. For example, in my, uh, in my case, the most easy dead giveaway of that a system like this exists 
is the fact that every deck I make is almost always going to have some counter mill in, in it. Cleanse the mind, the mending of Dominari, uh, or Gaia's Blessing. I'm pretty much always going to have something like that. Do you know how many mill decks I have played in the past, like, forever? Almost completely zero. The only time I encounter a mill deck is for if some for some unlucky uh, purpose I actually have like a five five win uh, five, five loss streak or something like that. Then it's maybe gonna put me up against a mill deck. But no, in average, I never absolutely play against mill decks because all of my decks are more or less safe against mill. And the only time that I actually encounter mill for the most time. Is when I am playing up uh, a deck that not does not have cleansed mine or Gaia's blessing in it. That's like a completely super simple dead giveaway. Some people verse mill decks a lot. There's a lot of fun mill decks you can play and whatnot. So yeah, I am pretty sure that the I'm pretty sure that the average statistic of me play uh, should be higher than playing. One in a hundred games is gonna be a mill deck. I am kind of extremely certain that that should be the actual statistic right there. But I, I pretty much never play against mill decks. The only time I play against mill decks is the times when I queue something like, for example, no, this does not have, this has counter mill. Oh, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. So the only time I actually queue into mill decks is when I don't exactly have a co uh, counter cards in mill decks, and that's pretty much it. And when I play, uh, when I re when I rarely queue into, for example, mill decks when I'm playing uh, m some of my more default decks that have guys blessing and cleanse the mind, it's only gonna be Ashiok mill because that's pretty much a staple. And when you make a new deck, it's pretty easy to see. Like, for example, a heal deck. A heal deck usually has this very simple win condition. It's either a Johnny's Pride's Mates or something like that, or it has a little bit heal and then it finishes uh, the enemy off uh, with a f big, big, big attack or something like that, right? Well, when you put all your cards, for example, in healing and control, and you have like one obscure thing like God Pharaoh's statue as a win condition, the game is gonna have a really hard time figuring out what the hell is exactly your deck's counter. Because making obscure decks like this is pretty hard for the game to understand. It quantifies the fact that I have a lot of control and a lot of healing, but it doesn't really understand what's my win condition exactly. If it was a planeswalker, it could try to balance the win percentile uh, by putting me up against uh, decks that have plane, uh, counter planeswalker things to him, in them. For example, again, uh, the the Infinity Turns deck. I get I get matched against people who have counter planeswalker things in their decks just because I have Nissa. But the game is wrong because well, Nissa is the win condition, but I'm not exactly pushing hard on Nissa. I never see Elder Sparks. Uh, Elder Sparks, or what, what was the uh, the name of that card? Sorcery costs two guilds of Ravnica. The Elder Spell. I never see people use this, uh, this sorcery at all, like ever. But when I play this deck, strangely enough, for some reason, Vraska's Contempt and Elder Spell become like extremely profoundly good cards. And also, uh, things I have noticed, you can try this one out yourself, it's it's pretty damn simple. Make a deck, put Gifts of Paradise, and Absorbs in that deck. And you will most likely instantaneously have a less, ch a less chance to queue into uh, red aggro decks. Because this is healing, this is a lot of healing. The game does not give a, well, a good, uh, good percentile win chance for decks that have a lot of healing against red. So on average, you're not exactly going to play against them, because that does not counter you. And the red deck is probably the easiest way to counter most decks, unless they're other aggro decks. So that's a pretty big thing. Yeah, things like this are extremely somehow simple to notice. 
The game's gonna quantify your dick to a, to a, a, to a sliver. Is it control? Is it creature aggro? Is it late game early aggro? Is it mill or is it whatever? And then it's gonna put you up uh, against something that should have a lower win percent uh, win percent chance against your deck if you need to win, or if you need to win, uh, lose, then it's gonna put you up against something that has a high win uh, win percentile against you. And that's like the thing. And that happens. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that this happens, and it happens a lot. And when you make a new deck and it's pretty well it's it's pretty interesting for example no one plays jace self mill with rivers rebuke and a lot of draw cards the game literally does not know what to do against this so it like quantifies you and like aha we should probably put this guy in a counter spell deck or something like that because there's stuff in it i don't know or a discard deck because that seems to be good against these type of decks when you need to lose. And it's not because we have too much draw. The game puts you up against that. You win against that. You win against it again. And the game is slowly starting to see the numbers go uh, for some reason not changing as it wants to. So it instantaneously just puts an X over that type of deck and puts you up against a new one until it understands what your deck is good against and what your deck is bad against. It's a pretty simple thing. But usually it happens instantaneously because, again, you can quantify these decks down pretty easily on average. But the hard part comes in the fact that you can put extremely used cards, but the win condition can be a, a, a completely obscure one or two card combo or something like that. And then the game has trouble, because then it doesn't have it there to, to classify it, so it just puts you up against something. For example, if you're bad against aggro, it's going to put you up against aggro two times. It instantaneously sees that you have absolutely no fucking chance against aggro, so it squelches in aggro as a counter, and it instantaneously makes the preparations for what is uh, what the, what is your deck good against. Yeah, that's pretty much a thing that happens, and I have noticed uh, noticed it for an extremely long time, an extremely long time. But I never talked about it because, again, there's not much to talk about in Magic, honestly, in my opinion. But sometimes, I well, if you've watched me from the Dota days, you know I like these sort of things. But in Magic, there's not a lot to talk about it. Like, you know, a little bit of this uh, rigged, a little bit of that, but yeah. In my opinion, the only rigging that is happening is the 50% uh, chance to win. Uh, why I'm queuing you up against decks that are supposed to be good against you and queuing up your decks that are supposed to be bad against you when they want you to win or lose and when you make a new deck and it's pretty well air quotes unique the game doesn't really understand what to queue up uh, queue you up against and then it's gonna just like you know say well you should figure slowly out what, what are you good against and what are you bad against Again, everything can be more or less quantified uh, down to an extremely simple level, and the game can again can understand that. And it's not hard to actually tell when a person is supposed to win or lose, because it's like I can already see how how the matchmaking works. If you have won X number of times, that means that you are most likely uh, more likely to face a deck that will either uh, win. Uh, win against you if you need to lose or lose against you if you need to win because you haven't won in, uh, in, a, uh, in a pretty decent while and the 50% win, uh, win rate or whatever is not holding up honestly that's pretty much it but there are obviously going to be some idiots who are going to say but wait a minute you can actually cr climb the rankings and whatnot isn't that, doesn't that instantaneously make your thing bullshit? No! If you actually think like that, you're even a bigger moron than I initially thought you are. Because the thing is like this. Are you forgetting the simple fact, uh, human factor? Are you completely forgetting and dismissing a thing, uh, that that exists? If, if, if not, then well, shit, tough luck, you're not the smartest person around, like even close, most likely. But if you are, well, are, then it's pretty fine. So yeah, 
that's that's pretty much it about the how rigged the uh, RNG matchmaking system is in Magic: The Gathering. Like again, there's not going to be a single company in this world that is stupid enough to ever make anything that is player versus player driven with a not around this 50 percent win uh, win rate on average. Obviously, there are going to be people who spike extremely high, and obviously, there are going to be people who spike extremely lower in the, in the high tiers and the low tiers. But on average, 50% win rate is literally the way to go because otherwise you're boring people. And again, drawing, drawing too many lands or not enough lands is not exactly RNG. Oh, but there is one thing that they could mess with, and there would be absolutely no way that you can actually uh, actually tell, tell if it's true or not. Land colors. Uh, the game could give you enough lands, for example, you, that your deck needs on average four, but it could give you, for example, four red lands and give you all blue cards. I'm not sure if that's RNG because that's even too hard for me to tell, but it happens extremely rarely, so I'm kind of more or less convinced that that is actual RNG, not some kind of intended, uh, in intended sneaky peeky way to actually make people lose. So yeah, that is a thing. It happens time to time, but it does not nearly happen frequently, uh, frequently enough for me to say that it is uh, that it is actually maliciously intended for just to make you lose instantaneously. You know, and also perfect curves and you know lucky lucky hands and whatnot are also not in my opinion just uh, made to counter people and whatnot. That's also actual RNG in my opinion. So yeah, but that would be the easiest way to just, you know, put you up against matchups you need to win and put you up against matchups you need to lose against sometimes. So that's pretty much it for this video. This was Kuder Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my channel. Check out the Discord. Check out the Patreon. Check out everything and have a nice day. Bye-bye.